It's Wes, welcome to this video. Today I'm gonna to share with you some exciting new extenders for the RF lenses that extend the reach of some, but not all, RF lenses. It's important to know what you're getting and what you're not when purchasing one of the new extenders for the RF lenses. So let's break this down into three steps. Why are the extenders for the RF important? Which lenses do they work with? And what are the pros and cons of getting an extender RF? First, the importance. Why is the RF extender so exciting? I actually keep saying an RF extender, but Canon website says extender RF, so I'm gonna to try to be consistent. It's not because they're the newest and most expensive extenders or adapters on the Canon website, which is true. It's also because they function as a teleconverters, so you can increase up to two times the focal range of your lens. So when you're out pursuing bird and wildlife photography opportunities, you're often faced with obstacles of terrain or the sensitivity of the wildlife to your presence. And you know that attempting to close the distance between you and your subject on foot in a car or plane can mean losing the very subject you're trying to photograph. The new extenders are important because they support the new RF telephoto lenses, the 100 to 500, the 600, and the 800, which, though you might not be used to the fixed F value of F11 on the last two, they're incredibly affordable compared to the EF800, which goes for $12,999. The new RF telephoto lenses are game changers in my opinions. They have five star ratings on Canon site from satisfied photographers. And with these lenses at 699 for the 600 mil and 899 for the 800 mil, you get incredible world-class reach for a fraction of the cost. The speed of the lens is the biggest difference and we'll get to that. You're a beautiful person and a good person. And if no one has told you that today, let me be the first one to tell you that. All right, back to the RF extenders. The extenders RF. You can get some bird and wildlife shots, great shots if you have a lens with the reach. So the extender RF helps you do that with select lenses of the RF mount. So first things first, there's two extenders RF available, the RF 1.4 and the RF 2 times extender. They're similar in all respects, construction, weight, durability, function. I'm going to simply discuss the two times converter for simplicity. This teleconverter magnifies the image by two times and retains full communication between the lens and the body. What does full communication mean? The extender RF enables metering, autofocus, image stabilization, and transmission of the XF data. Other features that make the extender RF significant, they're dust and water resistant, and they have a heat shield similar to the uh, what you find on the 70 to 200 RF lens that helps them uh, perform optimally in a wide range of conditions. So due to the design, the extender RF is shorter than the EF counterpart. Let's jump into some reviews. Google compiles a 3.4 star rating but that's only five reviews and two of those are one star ratings by people who didn't understand the compatibility issues with the extender RF. It only works on certain lenses. B&H website, there's five star ratings on the 1.4 extender and the person left a comment that the resolution and the sharpness are superb. There's no ratings yet on the Canon USA site, either for the 1.4 or the 2. Now here's an important note. Don't be confused with extension tubes and uh, Extension tubes fit between the body of the camera and the lens right here, and they are non-glass, they're non-optical extensions that help you get closer to your subject when you're focusing, so it enhances the macro abilities of the lens. Extenders, on the other hand, are optical. They have glass in them, and they magnify the focal range of that lens. So importantly, point two, which lenses does it work with? So the new RF 1.4 and two times extenders work currently with the RF 100 to 500, that's an F4.5 to 7.1 L series image stabilized lens. It also works with the RF 600 and the RF 800, and those are both F11 image stabilized lens. So there's a caveat on the 100 to 500 millimeter lens. The extender doesn't work below 300 millimeters, so just know that up front. That's part of the negative reviews I discovered. People ordered thinking one thing and they experienced another. I thought myself that it would be great if this extender worked with the RF 70 to 200. How amazing would that be to pay a few hundred dollars and have a 400 millimeter lens? No such luck. It does not work with any other lenses. So it's important to note the extender RF cannot be stacked with any other teleconverter. Uh, it cannot be used with any of your EF to RF adapter rings. Pros and cons. This is where um, 
it, it's really helpful to kind of weigh out what you're, you're expecting. If you're in the bird and wildlife photography game, you know that these RF lenses are dramatically more affordable and the extenders are dramatically powerful to increase your reach. So as stated before, the extender RFs are smaller, they're lighter than their EF counterparts. So that's a pro by comparison. Like all teleconverters, it multiplies the lens's focal length by 1.4 or two, and you lose a stop of speed. So you multiply the F number by 1.4. So what does that mean? Let's look at the RF 600 and 800 for an example. So the RF 600 F11 image stabilized lens becomes an 840 millimeter F16 image stabilized lens. The RF 800 F11 image stabilized lens becomes an 1120 millimeter F16 image stabilized lens. So let's look at the RF uh, 100 to 500. Remember, it only works between 300 and 500 millimeters. Um, so in this uh, situation, the RF 100 to 500 F4.5 to 7.1 L series lens becomes a 420 to 700 millimeter F8 to F10 L series lens. Not bad. What about the extender RF two times? The RF 600 F11 becomes a 1200 millimeter F22 lens and the RF 800 F11 becomes a 1600 F22 lens. Incredible. The sole advantage provided by um, an extender is the focal length increases, uh, but it does come with disadvantages. So what are those disadvantages? So adding a lens element decreases contrast, meaning your images are less contrasty or punchy. Uh, image distortion and chromatic aberration usually increases with teleconverters. The lens's native maximum aperture is reduced by one to two stops um, for the 1.4 and two times extenders respectively. Your autofocus speed is slowed, sometimes by a noticeable amount, and the overall size is increased of your gear, the overall weight is increased, the overall cost is uh, increased. Um, and so if you wanna see some samples, Nuclear Frank on Instagram, uh, he's been testing it out. He has some moon photos and a video of Jupiter. So go check his account. I'm gonna put some of those images in here. So the, I think what it comes down to is, is it worth it? Should you invest in this? And I would say for the two times, absolutely you should. If you have the RF 600 or 800, you should double down on that, pay a few hundred extra dollars. I'll put the prices up here and you should get an amazing 1600 millimeter lens or 1200 millimeter lens for a few hundred dollars. Just reflect on whether you're willing to put up with the loss of some image quality. It's a great investment. Actually, these RF lenses, now that I've done the research, they're so well priced compared to their EF counterparts. I'm thinking it would be a great uh, investment to have that and the extender. So I kind of sold myself by doing the research here. Um, I have a lot of respect for the awesome wildlife photographers out there. So shout out to the Wild Eye podcast, which is one I love and they produce great content on safari photography and they're based in South Africa. Um, thank you for joining me. Please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Do you use the extender or teleconverters? What's been your experience in the past, RF or EF? See you in the next video.